Hey everybody, uh, this is Otis Campbell and this uh, last lesson is on uh, cube roots and fractional exponents. Okay, this is an Algebra 1 lesson. Okay, so uh, let's start off with uh, cube roots. Since uh, 2 to the third is 2 times 2 times 2 which equals 8, then the cube root of uh, 8 is and it's written like this. It's like the square root but it has a little 3 out in front of that little radical sign. The cube root means it's equal to 2. It says what number times itself 3 times equals that inside number. Okay, so when you're taking cube roots, you need three on the inside to bring one on the outside. Remember when we did square roots, it was two on the inside that brought one on the outside. But this is uh, cube roots, so three on the inside brings one on the outside. This little number tells me how many on the inside to bring out. Okay, and you have to get the prime factorization a lot of times, just like we did the other one. Okay, fractional exponents. Okay, if you have a fraction as an exponent right here, this is the, the number that goes out in front of the radical. It's called the index number. Okay, and then this is the power that goes with the inside number. I, whoops, I mostly prefer to write it like uh, uh, like this uh, term over here. I like to have the, the the top number being outside. So I like to take the cube root or the b root right here, whatever that is, and then raise it to that power. But sometimes this is easier. Well, it just depends on which one, you guys. Okay, and so that that number b is called the index number, and it tells you how many on the inside that brings a, a one of them on the outside. So for example, uh, oh wait, wait one more. Okay, if there's a two on the outside, it's understood to be the same as just the plain old square root. Okay, so the square root of nine is three because that's equal to three times three and you need two threes on the inside that brings one on the outside. So same with this. These guys are equivalent statements right here. So when there's no number there, it's understood to be a two. Okay, one of those understood things here. So evaluate each expression. Okay, this one's the cube root of 27. Okay, you got to get the prime factorization of 27. So 27 is 3 times 9. That's prime. 9 is 3 times 3. So that's prime. So there's 27. All those three threes right there. Okay, this index right here tells me how many on the inside brings one of them on the outside. Okay, so the answer is just plain old 3. Okay, what about the square root of 27? Okay, remember if there's no number there, it's understood to be 2. So you do the same thing. You get the prime factorization, which is still 3 times 3 times 3. I did that over here. But this, since there's no number there, it's understood to be a 2. So I need 2 on the inside that brings one of them on the outside. And there would still be 1 left. So it would be 3 times the square root of 3. Okay, whereas over here, the cube root of this is just plain old 3. All right, what if I said the fourth root? The fourth root of 27. Okay, well, you know 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. I need 4 on the inside that brings one of them on the outside. So nothing comes out, so it's just the 4th root of 27. You can't do anything with that. Okay, perfect cubes, you guys. Perfect cubes are, are these numbers. I know it's a lot for a second, but look, this, these numbers on the left right here, these, these black numbers are my perfect cubes because they're 1 cube, 2 cube, 3 cube, 4 cubed, all the way up to 10 cubed right here. All right, so if I see the cube roots of any of these numbers, say I said the cube root of 729, it equals 9. Okay, the cube root of 216 equals 6. All right, and then these ones, these are also cube roots, you guys, because when I cube 1, negative 1 cubed, or negative 2 cubed, negative 3 cubed, you know, all the way down to, here, negative 10 times negative 10 is 100, but times negative 10 again is negative 1,000. Okay, so these are perfect cubes also, these black numbers here. So the cube root of negative 343 would be negative 7. All right, so those are all perfect cubes, you guys. All right, so evaluate each. Uh, so the cube root of negative 216, well, I kind of gave you that one just right before that. That should equal negative 6, because negative 6 cubed equals ne that inside number, negative 216. So the answer is negative 6. Okay, how about the cube root of 729? What number cubed is 729? It was 9. Okay, how about uh, the cube root? Uh, actually, well, there's a negative here. The, the negative... The cube root of negative 512. Well, let's pretend like this little negative is not here. The cube root of negative 512, okay, if you did, I know what it is, you guys. It's just, you guys probably forgot. There it is right, whoops, one more. Uh, there it is right there. So the cube root of negative 512 is negative 8. All right, let's go back to that. Where am I? Right there. So this is going to be negative, negative 8 right there, which is going to end up coming to be positive 8. Okay, because this negative right here is going to make this negative 8 a positive 8 right there. All right, so just watch the negatives. Okay, here I have the square root of 36 plus the cube root of 64. Okay, well, the cube root of 64 is 4. The square root of 36 is plain old 6. So you get 6 plus 4 is 10. Okay, 
8 to the negative 1 third power. Remember negative exponents a couple of lessons ago? Negative exponents, they get flipped and become positive exponents. So it becomes 1 over 8 to the positive 1 third. Remember that, you guys? All right, and then so that becomes 1 over, uh, remember the fractional exponents right here. This 3 is this uh, b right here. So this, is, this 3 is going to be the cube root of of 8, 8 to the first. So I'll write that right there. There's the cube root of 8 to the first. There's my one third power right there. See, this is my a over b power, a over b power right there. So to put it in a radical, it goes backwards. Okay, so the cube root of 8 is 2, so it's 1 half. Okay, let's try another one of those little rascally rabbits. Okay, 9 to the 5 halves power. Okay, that's going to be, remember this right here, I'm going to use this formula right here. When I have a fraction, here's my 5, here's my halves right here. So this is going to be a 2 right there. And remember, if it's a 2, I don't need to put it there. So and then inside, my 9 is going to go there and my 5 is going to go right there. Watch what happens. It breaks down quite a bit. Okay, so that 2, I don't need that 2. It's the same as the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3. So it's 3 to the 5th, and 3 to the 5th is 243. Okay? All right, let's do that with this one here. Okay, a negative exponent, it goes in the denominator and becomes a positive exponent. And I'm going to write this just like this. Okay, this 3 is my, my index number outside the radical. This is outside the parentheses. This 2 is going to be this little dude right here. Okay, so there it is right there. So it's 1 over the cube root of 125 squared. There's my 2 thirds power. The cube root of 125 is 5. So it's 1 over 5 squared. 5 squared is 25, so it's 1 25th. Okay, practice these ones, you guys. They get a little tricky if you don't practice them. So go ahead and practice them, please.